checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. The main event of NXT, I recommend everybody go watch this match. It's Oba Femi versus Duke Hudson for the North American title. And Duke Hudson, you know, the funny thing about Duke Hudson is he's not just some rando. Like, he debuted in 2005. Like, he's been doing this for 20 years. And he worked indies all over the place. He did some stuff in Japan. And so he ends up going to NXT, and he's part of, of Chase U. So he was always a heel. And then, like, literally years ago, they they did an angle where he ended up in Chase U. And so, you know, from day one, you're just thinking, okay, you know, we're going to do something for three, four months, and then he's going to... He's going to turn on him. And like three or four months goes by and turned on him. But he's still kind of, he's still, if you watch it, he's got that kind of little bit of an edge. And then, you know, six months go by. Year goes by. It's like, this bro ain't turning. And then, like, you watch him and he's an awesome baby face. He makes a great baby face comeback. So, you know, the Chase U gimmick in the building, you know, people always go, you know, Chase U will never work on the main roster. And, you know, maybe it won't. But I don't know because don't act like they haven't done, you know, NXT PLEs in front of 13,000 fans and the place hasn't gone nuts for Chase U and Andre Chase and the Chase U channel. They have. So, I'm not sold on the idea that they couldn't make it on the main roster. But the point is, they definitely make it in front of 300 people at the Performance Center. So everybody loves Duke Duke Hudson. So he's getting a title shot against his Obafemi. And Obafemi, I don't know, 50 matches maybe? And he's one of those dudes that not that long ago, we're talking like maybe nine months ago, whenever they did that breakout tournament, he was in the breakout tournament, and they were choreographed matches. They were practiced and everything like that. And I remember he won, but as I was watching it, I was like, he ain't the best guy. You know, he's, he's fine. They like him because he's, he's big, and he was a, I think he was a shot putter. He's a big, strong guy. But, like, I don't know. He's, he's fine. I wasn't blown away by him. I was much more blown away by Tavian Heights. But anyway, he ends up winning the North American title, and... I'm telling you, man, over the last eight months, this guy has improved so much. And this match with Duke Hudson, like Obafemi, I've seen him have matches with, with Wesley, okay? Easy, because he's a giant, Wesley's little. Can't have an easier match. Well, this is totally different. This is him against another big dude. Duke Hudson's like 6'5". So... They had a totally different kind of match. It didn't feel choreographed at all at any point. The heat was incredible. Duke Hudson running wild at the beginning, like Oba oh, Femi sold great for this guy. Duke's like doing running Frankensteiners, and like it was awesome. And then they got some heat, and he beats up on old Duke Hudson, and then Duke makes his usual great comeback. And, uh, you know, finally at the end, Oba gives him his big toss onto the announce table, throws him in the ring, hits the pop-up powerbomb and wins. The heat for this match was awesome. I mean, this guy, Oba Femi, he's going to be a main roster main eventer. I mean, oh, yeah. he's one of those guys where, like, he's got it, dude. He The work, his presence, his – I mean, he's got he, – he doesn't have what you would say is like a traditional great promo, but like he's Oba Femi. Yes. And his Oba Femi promos are great for Oba Femi. Anyway, he's a can't miss. So you should go watch this match because it's a legitimate great match. I agree. Nothing to add. Hey, look, Oba Femi is, what more can you say? He is a blue chipper. And I remember when Wes Lee was asking for his title match back and Oba Femi just, no. <laughs> with that accent and that look and it's like that should be his catchphrase you know anybody that wants anything from him he is a star i mean he's obviously a star in the making he's like you said the presence he's got a physical charisma that you can't teach and all that so 
yeah, that was not only a good performance for him, but a good performance for Duke Hudson as well, too, who I disagree with you. I think Chase, you would have problems on the main roster, and I think it's so much better that it is an NXT thing because you you do know you're always going to get a reaction out of it, and you have so many people kind of going in and out of there that it's perfect. You know, Rich Holland come down, try to do something with him. If that doesn't work, okay, he can be out of the group. At some point, Thea Hale can go up. You have somebody else who's charismatic or you can put with the group. To me, it's just one of those things where, sure, I mean, I'm sure they want WWE money and main roster money and everything, but it actually probably benefits everybody in the entire system for them to stay. Well, you know, if they don't get over on the main roster, the reason will be that, you know, I got a I got a love hate relationship with a lot of things in NXT. But one thing that they do better than anybody, I'm talking Raw, SmackDown, Dynamite, Collision, anyone, is they spend a lot of time getting over everybody's personalities and individual personalities. And the reason that Chase U is over is every single person in Chase U has a very... I mean, you know every single person's everything about them. With Thea Hale, she's wild crazy. You know, she's all excited about everything. And, you know, Duke Hudson's kind of, you know, he's a little more, he's laid back. He's not so sure about everything all the time, but he's, he's very loyal. Yeah. Andre Chase swears all the time, and, you know, he makes his mistakes, and he had a gambling addiction and all this. It's like, you know, you understand everything about them. And I think that one of the reasons that people who love NXT – love it so much, is because of the character development. Nobody has better character development than NXT. Nobody. You may think the characters are dumb sometimes, but you understand every last single character. Like, to the point where, you know, early on, it's like, who is this new athletic blonde woman? They have 19 of them now. I don't remember her name, whatever. But as each week goes by, you learn a little more about each of these people. They they put them in positions where you start to understand their personalities more. And it doesn't take long where it's like, what do you want to know about Jada Parker? Fully three-dimensional character. What do you want to know about Carmen Petrovich? Carmen Petrovich. And her, yeah. and her karate background. And, I mean, even Sol Ruka. It's like you, her promos, her actual promos are very wooden, and they sound like she's talking about somebody else. But you know all about this character and her personality. So that's why these people are over to this audience. If you bring them up to the main roster and you don't give the people that, then, yeah, they're going to struggle, just like uh, Pretty Deadly. What the heck do we know about Pretty Deadly on the main roster? Nothing. They they hang out together and, uh, you know, but that's it. That's all we know about them. And they do a much better job at NXT getting these acts over. What about Tatum Paxley? I hate this character. But it's not like I don't get it. <laughs> like, she's some bizarre woman that uses these goofy mind games and plays with dolls and drives everybody nutty. And the, the thing that's so irritating about Tatum Paxley, it's the exact same thing with Joe Gacy. They're both good workers. But when they come on TV, you want to switch the channel because the, the, the gimmick is so horrible. It's so horrible you just want to turn off the television, and it blinds you to the fact that, wow, she can have a good match. Just hate the gimmick. It sucks. They now, still haven't explained Wendy Chu, what kind of nightmare she was having that she woke up like that. Well, yeah, Wendy Chu, they could do a better job. But you know what? It looks like they're putting Wendy Chu and Tatum together. I'm all for it. Because I'd rather have two awful gimmicks together as one act that I only have to see once than two separate absolutely horrible gimmicks at different points on the show. True. You know how many bad gimmicks they've given Wendy Chu? Like a thousand year old woman, <laughs> a narcoleptic, mm -hmm. a, a, a zombie with a pillow. I mean, how many can you get? Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.